Ah, nothing beats a nice good old bento. Oh, now I know why they're famous. Or why they're famous here. Alright, let's let's go to the high let's head over to the high prosecutor's office, shall we? Yeah. February twenty second, high prosecutor's office. Room twelve oh two. This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. A trophy? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, he must be a real stuck-up jerk. Mr. Phoenix Wright. You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice. Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! M -m 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 Mr. Edgeworth! Uh -huh. You know him from somewhere? Uh, of course! I'm his biggest fan! My sister introduced us once and... Right, her sister was the chief prosecutor after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, you've been... I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. No, no, did I? No! I was just missing right here. He... Hey, don't blame me. We're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? A body was found in the nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. Hmm? That would be... my car. What of it? What?! Y -y -y your car?! I'll say one thing. She certainly can scream. <sighs> Alright. Well, Edgeworth, let's talk. So the body was found in your car. Go ahead, say it, right? You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all the trouble to help me last year, no less. No! We don't think you did it! I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him! Oh, uh, uh, wait! No! I, she didn't say that! She didn't do it! I didn't... Wait. So you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Y yes sir! I'm a sky! It, uh... It's nice to meet you again! Now that didn't sound forced at all. Ah, uh, now I remember. You're... You've really grown. I'll admit, it was a surprise to me, too. To think that my own car would become a scene of a murder. More surprising still. Now I'm forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand. But wait! What did you just say?! Lana Skye is the chief prosecutor. The top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You? Mr. Edgeworth! Edgeworth? To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time where there weren't rumors about this guy. Forging evidence. Arranging false testimony. Illegal searches. You name it. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I am the one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy! <laughs> Some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life. Impossible to stop. But... Some of them even go as far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? that has gotta be a story behind that one. Solana Sky. Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes, we worked together... We first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago. I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I've always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. M mistaken? Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, 
She stabbed him with my knife. What? What? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife is the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife kept in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Edgeworth's knife. I'm gonna have to drop that down. Um, Edgeworth. What? Are you sure you didn't do it? <sighs> Come on, can't he take a joke? You have the strangest sense of humor, Mr. Wright. Right. Anyway, let's take a look around. Um, hmm? Here's a bookcase. Whoa! These are all case files? They're stacked up to the ceiling! There's even a ladder! Odd. I thought Edgeworth wasn't good with the heights. You must have someone get him, get them for him! <laughs> Strange. Why did I just see a picture? Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? You must study these case reports so closely. He's so cool! You wouldn't say that if you saw him sweating bullets up on that ladder. Eh. What? Is that? My, my, my! What an amazing bou bouquet! Just right for Mr. Edgeworth. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead, Wendy. Wendy? I've heard that name somewhere before. And beside it, a giant steel samurai! Wow, I want one! Huh? There's something written on the bottom of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place, Wendy. Wendy? Is she Mr. Edgeworth's fiance? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> what was that horrible image I just saw? So, so about the desk? That looks really cool. A work desk. It's quite tidy, as one might expect. What a nice desk! Easy to use and easy on the eyes. It's polished so well I can see my reflection. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? Maybe I'll take the name pla plaque as a souvenir. Don't. He'll sue you. Not even kidding. Well, that's a pretty cool suit. Just like the one he's wearing, I guess. Wow! This jacket is even lacier than his usual ones! That must be his lucky trial jacket! Lucky jacket? Right. I've never seen him wear it. I'm sure there's a story behind it, why it's in the frame. Maybe he'll be naughty. Maybe I'll be naughty and take a- Wow, what? Maybe I'll be naughty and take a picture! She's getting way too excited about this. Ugh. A chess table? Hey, a chess board! I'm not too up on my chest, but it looks like blue's in a bit of a tight spot. The Red Knights have surrounded the blue pawn. Huh? Those horses are, mount are mounted knights. The swords really have sharp edges. And check out the poor pawn. His head's kind of spiky. Kind of reminds me of you. Mr. Edgeworth must be an avid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? <laughs> edges. Surrounding a pawn with spiky hair. Nah, it's nothing. That... That can't be. Alright, let's, let's examine this trophy. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Hmm, <laughs> prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. K -k -k King of Prosecutors? It's a great honor. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that... K, that's... K stands for King. Yeah, you got a problem with it. I didn't design that thing. King of Prosecutors. Kind of like Employee of the Month, only better. I'm gonna have to take note of that. Hmm. Alright. So let's go... Eh, yeah, why not? Let's show him off a badge. I once dreamed of being a defense attorney. A long time ago. What? You want them to be a defense attorney, Mr. Edgeworth? Yet, my path is laid out clearly before me. I have no time to reflect on what must be, what might be done. Or what, mi what might have been. So about this knife that's yours. Let's take a better look at it. Apparently I, ha I took it from him. So let's just leave that aside. This must be with the victim's blood, right? Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this, anyway? Hey! Maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild! Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I've always pictured him as an outdoorsman! Outdoorsman! 
Now that's a scary thought. He's right behind me. Um, so about this knife. It's, it's against my policy to discuss evidence with the defense. Especially with you. He doesn't like you much, does he, Mr. Wright? Nah, that's worth it's never personal. It's all about winning tomorrow. So, let's take a better look at this trophy. Uh, zoom in real good. Uh, is there anything at the... Ooh, there's a plaque at the bottom. Hey, check it out! There's a metal plate here! Hmm, looks like the names of all the previous recipients are engraved on it. Wow! We guys listened a bunch of times! Von Karma! Guess he must be a foreigner? Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Well, wherever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor! I'd like to meet this Von Mr. Von Karma sometime. When she says it, his name does have a kind does have kind of a ring to it. When she says it. Uh, let's check out what else I can see in this statue. But it looks really odd. There seems to be a hole in it. Like, it seems like there should be something on top, but there isn't. Maybe that's just what I think. Anyway, so, in other words, you were the best of the best this year, huh? You can't take that foolish grin el- You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why is that? I had to go get the police department ceremony to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, correct? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award. For better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday? Alright, sure. So, could you tell me more about yesterday? The day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day of the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? Working with the police department, we sort them and file all evidences for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. That, there's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got the shield. I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. That's very precise. People like myself and Edward, and Mr. Edward pride ourselves with our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I place a little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Well, apparently I jotted down the things of his parking stub. This is the parking stub from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back. What, right? I'd appreciate it if you direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um... <laughs> Excuse me! But is Mr. Edwards anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here and start with the rescue request of the chief, sir! I forgot your report, sir! Report? What? Did you find new evidence of the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Uh, Sky, sir? No, sir! No name of that kind, sir! That is not a report, sir! <laughs> I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. Mr. Edgeworth's lid isn't on very tight, is not very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated! Sir! But, but, sir! I'm just following orders, sir! They told me to bring this to you! I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement with us, sir! Give me your name! The, uh, uh, yes! M yes, sir! M M Meekins, sir! Officer Meekins! Right. Officer Meekins? Take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. <laughs> but, 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 sir! I, I don't... I didn't know! Poor guy. 
Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Right. Y yes, sir! Nah, he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. But let's do as he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective of the same department as that patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, uh, thanks. He seems to have finally calmed down, at least. Let's leave him alone. There's no messing with him when he's like this. Let's go back. Ah, it's her. So, uh, I don't think there's anything new to talk to her about. Oh, right. This knife. Could you take a look at this? You! Y yes You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Uh, uh, no, but thanks. You didn't even look at me. Mmm! Just, you must have brewed the leaves for a long time to get the rich flavor like this. We pre-infused the leaves with steam before brewing. I knew it, so that's the secret to their aroma. Exquisite! The only thing I'm smelling here is wasted time. Let's keep going. Oh, right, I never checked out that stuff. Well, let's see. Well, as expected of Edsworth, there's nothing special about it, other than the time. Miles Edsworth, 1712. And the d this is dated the day of the crime. The murder took place the three minutes after Edgeworth parked his car. If only he was held up a couple extra red lights. He wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Perhaps. Just goes to show you, show you never know what'll happen when you run a yellow light. I don't think he'd be that reckless, but okay. Let's get going. We have somewhere we need to head to go. Um, oh yeah, the police department. Let's go. February 22nd. Police department. Entrance. <sighs> We're finally here. Why would they put the detectives so, so far away from the prosecutor's office? That took almost 30 minutes by taxi. Traffic wasn't even that bad. This is my first time to the police department, actually. Uh-huh. Hold on, what's that? Disturbing! Why does it undulate like that? Oh, wait, I know. This is the Blue Badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright! You know a lot about the police department! Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the Blue Badger. Who's that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the blue badger. Uh-oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. <laughs> hey, pal! What are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why are you dancing over there? What? Uh, um, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey, I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. How does he people keep reading my thoughts? Let's ask about the case. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. W why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal. There's plenty of evidence against her. But, but what if that evidence was faked? Hey, pal. Can I speak to you for a second? Huh? Me? Why is the little girl so peeved at me? She is a relative of the suspect. Lana Sky's sister. Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister! Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically! Yes, sir! Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just... It's a sensitive issue with us these days. <sighs> I guess so, I understand why. Faked evidence is not good. So about the investigation. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe! What did you do this time? What do you mean this time? Then, what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with my sister's case and all. It's true. We've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are, are being led into criminal affairs now. 
lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the, ba the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself was directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall? Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know the Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of the crime scene. It's unheard of, pal! <laughs> well, he seems kind of upset by this, so... Hey, he maybe he'll know something about this trophy. Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Rudgeworth got yesterday. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award of diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering why they awarded why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Uh I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. But I was proud of Mr. Edgeworth for winning that award. He's even got naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Yeah, we've heard about the rumors. Um... So, about this ID. Uh, Detective Gumshoe? What can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey pal! This is the Detective ID's card! You can't just keep that! You have to turn it on into the police! People like you that get me into so much trouble all the time. Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Mm, let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Sounds familiar. Nah, <laughs> my mistake. But don't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? Uh, before that... What's this knife? Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed in Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Uh, wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course someone else really did it. Someone who must have... Uh, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with, Ed with Edgeworth. So, all right, let's talk to him a bit more about Bruce Goodman. So, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so this ID card belonged to the victim. He was a detective like myself, Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm, don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground when we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transfer in the case he handled two years ago. Evidence transfer? Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but... Where does the chief prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot? And Lana's confessing as much. Oh... This case is getting easier and easier. What are the rumors at law? He's in a tough spot again. Poor Edgeworth. Again? Oh, yeah. Well, it all started with the murder of that defense attorney, Hammond. But Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal. There may have. There has always been rumors about Edgeworth. Watching evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there are always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of that murder, no one's whispered. They're practically shouting. But there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department's higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. But what? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. 
Just doing this one for all of us. So I'm gonna just go out on a limb and ask what this thing is doing. Uh, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece! You made this, Detective Gumshoe? Chief threw together some designs, and I just did my thing, pal. N nice, nice work. It's battery powered, so it can go anywhere. There's no switch on, so it just dances, dan dance, dance, dances until the batteries die. <laughs> Poor blue badger, faded to dance until he drops. I'm gonna write this down. This, yeah. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you! <laughs> Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who is. What was his name? The guy in the parking lot. That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall. Is he some kind of Wild West sheriff or something? No, Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West L.A. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this, and they'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. Letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. Awesome! I'll be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there, and nobody will look at you twice, pal. If you say so. Whoa. Supposedly this will let us go in, but... Hey, look here! Looks like something's been erased! Looks like it was a letter or something to, to Detective Gumshoe. Let's see! Annual bonus, $20! Well, uh, I think a couple of zeros are missing. No, that sounds about right. At least in that detective's case. <laughs> Maybe I should rethink my career as an investigator. Poor Gumshoe! His annual bonus is twenty dollars. I feel so horrible for him sometimes. Well, hmm. So anyway, this thing he gave us. We get to investigate the crime scene now. So let's head over to the parking lot again. February twenty-second, prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in the pit till the sun sleeps. I'll see you in see my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh! Still here! Uh, 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 hello! Why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too! What happened to the security guard? Hey! What's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a dog it's, that's lost or tired. Jake Marshall. You're a strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Alright, let's, let's try talking to him about the victim. There's something I wanted to ask you. The scene of the crime. The cold grave of a man who's lost their dreams. And me? I watch over them as they sleep, dreaming of the desert's harsh set judgment. <laughs> He's asleep! Well, should we show this helpless case something to catch his interest? Well... Right. Yeah, let's show him this letter of introduction. Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, fan letters to me go right to this platoon. The letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe? Ah, that old cow dog. Hmm, he's holding a birthday party or something. Huh? Look, look, where, where should it say letter of introduction? It says invitation. Ah, I think he just miswrote it. Great, Detective Gumshoe. I owe you one. No worries. This proves it's from Detective Gumshoe, better than a blood test. Guess I'd better let you in, then. Then thank you, Miss Officer Marshall! Officer Marshall isn't a detective, he's a patrolman. That reminds me of something. That's odd! Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or hire? We, well, folks, 
Clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. But be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hoot, nanny. Note to self. Please investigations are like settling land. Oh, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. That's just... Yeah, let's just get rid of that. Alright, now that he'll be able to t be willing to talk about the victim. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, well. Aren't you a feisty doggy there now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. Smiling Madonna took, told me in the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stabbed at the chest. Fine piece of work. This here is the autopsy report. I guess people are just handing these things out. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prosecutor Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So, there's no motive! Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. There's one reason why he didn't do much work as Chief Prosecutor. But, my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here, to this parking lot? So it seems like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. Okay. Hope I can keep up with all these western. Um, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective? You're calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me! But you're a patrolman now. So how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets you by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's hard, though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs around with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth. That cow dog's been kicked out of his cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he doesn't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe, kicked out of the investigation? That's unfortunate. Hmm. Let's, let's talk about the, the, we the weapon. Alright, compadre, count to three. Huh? You gotta do that if you're going to draw evidence on someone. That's what we do in Texas. Remind me never to visit Texas. Um, how about this one? 5.12 p.m. Prosecutor's bright red steed came in with a trot, real slow like. A trot? But my Madonna tells me the crime occurred three minutes later. So it seems Chief Prospector was waiting and was lying in wait. Maybe. Waiting for her prince to ride in on his bright red horse. So what you mean is. The killer intended to use Edward's car all along. Well, that's interesting. I should show him this ID. What's that? Some sort of police passport? This is Detective Goodman's ID card, strangely enough. We found it on a good distance away from the crime scene. Good distance? In this rat hole? And if you want distance, get yourself to Texas. Texas! This is a tiny little crime scene. A tiny little town. Tiny little evidence. What difference does a few yards make, compadre? Note to self, if you encounter suspicious evidence, think of Texas. There's no better way to study than to hang out with the pros. Maybe this guy should go back to L.A. West L.A. Let, let, I don't think I can get anything else important from him, so let's just turn away. What was this again? This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anything more, of any more else to... If anyone else it could belong to, 
What's so scientific about that? So we should check it out? Yeah. Right. Let's check it out. Alright. Okay. It's yellow. It has a strap on it. Man, what a boring strap. What's wrong with it? Everyone has different tastes, you know. Here, check out mine. It's a pink princess strap. They're hard to, these are hard to, come, hard to come by, you know. I see it's, he's as popular as ever with the kids. Ugh. Bow powers. Alright. Um, there's a blue button here. Hmm. The display is still on the redial button. Redial? Uh, Mr. Wright, most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to dial the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know, know things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I just, you know, you never know people from, you never know with people from your generation. Whatever, let's just check this phone out. Well, well, I heard her. Redial. Now, I wonder who the owner of this phone call, of this phone call last. Note to self, a defense attorney doesn't think first. He just pushes the buttons. Hey, that song! I know that song! Hey, what's going on over there? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. I, I see you, partner. You pressed me down on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Whose phone was this, anyway? It was on the ground over there. Whose phone is it? That belongs to Chief Pro Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when, these, when she was taken into custody. Right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds, according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now, I've got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ringtunes. Oh, that? Oh. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was my phone. W w what? Your phone? Yeah, it, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. Wrong number. <laughs> I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, Panda! Uh oh. I'm inciting the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Well, I'm taking this with me. I think most people should probably just write things down and keep a mental note of it. I begin to wonder why I'm, why I'm a kleptomaniac. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. Defense attorneys are, re are relegated to B Block. The dream of one day I'll be able to park my car here. I'll go over to B Block and buy you hamburgers. Buy my hamburgers from you, Mr. Wright. I'm not planning on giving up my job that soon. So what's that? B Block is through here. Where that's where visitors park. I can see the Lunchland car from there. Over there, far in the distance. Hey, you're right. I like the cute design on the door. I can see a cartoon cow munching down on a juicy looking steak. Doesn't that strike you as a little creepy? Just don't think too deeply about it and you'll be fine. So, let's check the car. It appears to be the car where the body was found. It looks like the lock of the trunk is busted. The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Quite a luxury car. It just screams, I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. Huh. Hmm, what if I can examine closer? What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, something's written on it. Let's see. 67S122. There's a name printed on the paper above it. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. 
Well, so, what does that mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self, for detective reasoning, go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Well, I'm just gonna take this with me. Let's check this out one more time. So Noah's in here. He must have fallen out of Detective Gordon's mind. And, and what does it mean, Mr. Wright? I have no idea. So Detective Reason, go to his right. Not right. I'm sure everyone would, would be just as confused. Hmm. Well, no clues are here. What does what he know? Alright, now he just wants me to draw it again. I don't want to do that. Uh, hmm. Well, I have a cell phone, and I have an autopsy. Alright, let's check the autopsy. His name is Bruce Goodman. The age is 36, male. Date and time, date and time of death was February... See, it says 21st. Between 4 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Huh. And he died exactly as was said. Loss of blood from the chest wound. Wound was caused by a 12 by a 12 centimeter knife. A single stab wound was found. Nothing more. Hmm. Well, it's always good to check out your stuff. Alright, um. Uh, I have a cell phone, property of Lana Sky. Last call was made at 518. Day of the murder. Hmm. So, what she managed to do. What I find is odd that she managed to wait for Mr. Edgeworth to drive up at 512, kill him at 515, and then called someone at 518. Well, that's somewhat odd. That, that's very precise. Oh, okay. That, that's really precise. Alright, so about Lana Sky. So there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister? That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. Huh? And the prospector tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. My condolences. Officer Marshall! Yes, Bambina? H how can you say that? You and my sister, you are... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? <sighs> I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's the dry wind that's blowing through the prospect's office. Dry wind or ill will? Someone's up to something here, but who? The office atmosphere. Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years. Forged evidence, ranging testimonies, you name it. He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until you met G. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. She followed the rumors that about Edgeworth through those horses. You f must, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person. Who? Bambina. It's your sister. Chief prosecutor. The free chief prospect Olana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all the cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets. Some people load them with deals. What are you saying, huh? Wait, what? You're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where's there's gunshots is bound to be bullets. That's the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everybody knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? 
So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we got some clues. We have an autopsy report. We know from the victim. And a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that, she'll, that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma. Yes? I know that the song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids? <laughs> the phone that just rang wasn't mine. It was yours. At 5.18, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. I'm gonna have to make extra notes about this. A detective is murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor of the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. Now we wait until it's time for the trial tomorrow. Ugh, I'm gonna have to study the court record a bit more. Um, so yeah, this is Phoenix Wright they're, they're signing out, and I and I mean Luigi Fan 64D. See, th this is Let's Play Phoenix Wright: Rise from the Ashes. See you next time.